All right, guys, so here we go. We're about to get started with the coding of the organ. I am going to go ahead and um, this is Visual Studio Code. It's already opened. Um, if you do not have Visual Studio Code, it's easy to download. Just go to Google and search for Visual Studio Code. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need to install a package called Live Server and it just helps with page reload. So, like, you come to extensions tab right here and just click it. Um, it's going to show things I have installed as my own extensions here, and um, this is Live Server. So, if you don't have it, all you have to do is search for Live Server here, and it will bring it out, and you just press install. So, right now, let's go get started. Um, first thing I'm going to be doing is creating the directory structure. So we want to have, we've already created a directory for our sound samples. Next, we're going to create another directory for images. So images, then we'd have another directory also for our JavaScripts. That's another thing. Try to always click outside, except you want the folder to be a subfolder, then you don't want to click on this. So, um, the next directory is going to be styles. So, I'll just call it styles. And then finally, we need to create our index page. So, index.html, and I'll come here and new file. Oh, I'm creating the new file under styles. So again, I'll click outside and new file. So I'll call that index.html and it will open that up here. Um, once you have Visual Studio Code installed, it installs Emmet and Emmet is like a way for helping you to type fast. So first thing I'm going to do is I'll press this asterisk and you see it already brings out Emmet abbreviation. So once you press that, you press tab. Sorry, just a minute. So I press this and I press tab, and it brings out this boilerplate. So we we'll give the project a title, and um, when I open it with Live Server, you see. Okay, in fact, let me open with Live Server right now. So open with Live Server. Just a minute. It would um, have to set up a server for me and load up. So server is starting at port 5500. So now when you look up here, this is where the title shows. And as you can see, it just shows document. Now we want to change that. So I'd come here and just put Kevin Zogel. You can type today, Kevin Zogel. Now once I save and go back to the page, even without refreshing, Live server refreshes for me, and I have Kev Kevin's order here. So, next thing I'm going to do is copy the background image we're using. I already have it in the version of the app I did first. So, images, and that's this GAGO one. So, I'll press Ctrl C to copy it. In fact, let's copy all three images so we can try all three and see what we feel about them. And, um, I just come back here. This is where I have Kevin Zogel and in the images folder and paste it there. So now if we go back to Visual Studio Code and we open up our images, all the images are there now, the three images. So what we're going to do next is create like a style sheet. So I'll come in here and new file and I'll call this index.css which is the style. Um, style sheet files are called CSS files, so it means cascading style sheets. So, first thing we need to do is link our index.html to the index.css. Um, in order to do that, we just come in here at the top where it has add and we'll do like a link. Now, if you have um, Visual Studio Code, again, this comes out. So, once I press this, it fills out the 
rest for me and I'll just put styles sorry styles and click this slash index.css and save it so now if I come to the styles and I take for instance the body that's the body of the HTML file I just I want to do like design on it body I can say background color and um, let's give it a background color of blue so we just start with that and see and once I come back you see the entire background is blue um, I usually like to do a couple of things when I get started with things like this so I turn off all the margins so I just say margin zero and padding zero padding zero now box sizing border box and the reason why you do that is because this helps with actually doing your what's it called your when you're doing your margins and paddings, border box helps a lot. So let's just keep it at that. Um, next, we want to put one of our images as the background. So we'll come again and we'll type background, not background color this time. So background. And then we'll now put a URL. And this URL will point to the location where our image is. So first thing we need to do is exit from the styles directory and then we can go into the images directory and choose the GAGO one and now when I save and we come back to the page this background is there um, if we wanted we could change it to the second one what's the name of the second one okay GAGO2 and save and now the second image is there and um, same thing with GAGO3 so GAGO1 is the one I like to use um, let's try three I've not seen that actually so okay this is three so um, personally I still prefer one so let's go with that another thing I like to do is to make the display flex and um, okay you know what I don't know how to do this because explaining a lot of these things is just going to take time um, but it's it might show you it might explain things better okay you know what as we go along I'll explain so display flex just makes everything display side by side um, you'd see the importance very soon then I would set the flex direction and I want it to be in columns so in rows rather so everything is straight down and next thing we're going to do is give the body a width and i want to set the width to 100 view width invariably this is going to take the entire width of the screen and uh, the height view height invariably the entire height of whatever device you're looking at it from okay so now we have our image set up here and this is looking exactly the way it needs to look so next thing we need to do is come into our index file and right here I would create a div and maybe with this I can start explaining some of the flex things so um, just call this div dot let's say box and um, I'll do three of them so I'll type times three now emit allows me to do this so I'll save this and then we can come back to the styles and I can come here and pick up the boxes so box so by doing this dot box that means anything in the file that has a class of box should have these styles applied to it so first i'll give them a width of maybe 300 pixels a height of say 400 pixels and um, let's give them a 
the border so border one pixel solid and um, let's say red so now if I save and we come back you can see we have three boxes and you can see they're side by side because of the flex direction now let's if I were to change this from row to column save now you see they stack up down this way so flexbox is really really good for this sort of stuff again this is not what we're doing i just wanted to show this just to explain things out for you now in the spirit of explaining i'll go ahead and change it back to row which is the default and now i actually want to center everything so every instead of having everything like this we want it to appear in the middle here so centered left to right and centered up and down so what we do is in the body we come here and we say justify content center and align items center and now save and as you can see it moves everything to the middle and centers it height wise too. Now this is going to be where we would have our piano set up. So this is where the piano would be and it would also use this same style. So for now I'm just going to go ahead and delete those three boxes because we don't need them. I just use them to explain. So right now we'll start work on the keys. Um, first we want to put the keys in a container. So I'd call that container great. I'll give it the idea of great since it's the great organ. So all I do since I have Emmet, which is which comes with Visual Studio Code, is just type dot great and press tab and it gives me that. So next in that great we now want to put in our keys now the way the piano is designed we have white keys and black keys so we we'll give the white keys a class of white and the black keys a class of black now there's a difference between a class and an id an id is unique to one element in the page meanwhile a class can be shared by a bunch of elements in the page you would understand a bit better as we go. I just don't want to waste too much time explaining very simple things. So what I'll do now is just type dot white for the first white key. And then next, after a white key, we're going to have a black key. So I'll just copy this down and change this to black. And then next we have a white key, which is our D. I'll copy this or just paste the white I'm oh, sorry um, copy the white here in fact I don't even need to copy I could just be using the emit and then next we have dot black for black key and then next we have dot white for the E and then another dot white again for the F Then a black after that. A black and um, a white. It's white. Then next we have a black. So next we have another black and then dot white. So this is one octave, I think that's eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Okay, so I made a mistake somewhere. This is C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, um, A, B flat, and then B. Okay, so okay, maybe I counted wrong then. Slash D. So I'll go ahead and save that now. So right now we have a full octave. I'm going to um, align everything. I always like my typing to look good. There's something called columnal selecting, which I use a lot when I'm working in Visual Studio Code. I just click where I want my cursor and I press Alt and Shift together. Now I can just drag like this up to this point. And I just press the backspace and it aligns everything properly. So I'll save it. If we do go to our file, we don't see anything. But um, once we start styling, you would see. So I'll come in here and um, for dot white, we would start with, let's say, a width of 100 pixels. Height will be four times that, so height from over. And then I'll save that and I'll give it a border one pixel. So the one pixel is the thickness of the border, so one pixel solid and um, a color of let's say 333, which is like a grayish color. And now, if I do save it, we should see something on the screen. Okay, so now you can see. But again, everything is lined up like straight down. That's not what we want. We want it to be side by side. So this is where Flexbox comes in. And we just take the grid, which is the container that covers everything, and display it as flex. So I'll come up here and type dot grid and display flex and save. And now if we do come back, you can see they're now lined up side by side, which is what we want. Now the width and the height look too big, so I'll reduce it a lot more. That way it's smaller. So I'll set the width to say 25 pixels. And the height is four times that, so 100 pixels. And while at it, we might as well give it a background color. So I would say background and set the background color to white. Now, if we do save, we should see. So now we're beginning to see something. Um, next, we want to show our black keys. So I'd come here again um, and we'd now do dot black. width for the black keys let's set it to half of the white keys so width would be 12.5 pixels um, I usually like my my the height of my black keys to be maybe about five times that of the width so five times um, 12.5 is 25 50 50 plus 12.5 is 72.5 uh, so height um, 72.5 pixels let's save and let's come back so now you can see it's already said the black keys we don't we can see the spaces there but we don't see them so what i'll do is just give them a background color so they pop out so background background color we can say black and now if we do save we should see something so now we can see the black keys but again they are not like set right so we're going to give a negative margin so the key moves a bit to the left and a bit to the right now we want to share it 50 50 both ways so what we do is come here and say margin left and 
and set it to half of the width which is um, already 12.5 so we want to set it to minus um, 6.25 I think I hope I'm right 6.25 pixels and when we do come back it's already moved it 6.25 pixels now the right margin we're going to set negatively to and that will push this key is to come and meet it so you see what I'm talking about in a minute so margin right minus 6.25 pixels now I'm sure it will close up but we're probably not going to see the other side yeah so you can see it has closed up but we are not seeing the other side that's because the second white key is covering everything so we just need to give it a z index that is greater than that of the other white key so it pops out so in order to do that we just come down here and we say z index and i will set that to two sorry i forgot to close this but that's why it's giving me the squiggy line errors so now save and now we perfect we have our first first octave so all we need to do now when we go back to our HTML code since we want a five octave keyboard is to copy this five times and paste it in the code or four times so again I would use like I'll just select all control C come down here so octave 2 I didn't copy everything. Control C, Control V. So that's the second octave. This is the third octave. This is the fourth octave. This is the fifth octave. So now, if I do save this and we do come back to our code, we're now starting to see what looks like a five octave piano, but we're still missing the last C. So all we need to do is just add a white key down there so i'll just copy this white this white key here control c and just paste that down here and save and now we are golden so this is the first part of the lesson i hope you understand everything if you do not understand please um, drop a comment and let me know what you don't understand and i'll be sure to explain everything much much better all right guys thank you so much um okay one last thing on my own piano i did do like rounded corners because uh, most pianos are not square like this so in order to do that we go to the styles and for the white keys we'd say um, border radius so border um bottom border bottom left radius and I will set that to say 5 pixels let's see how that looks okay so just I don't know if you notice but it puts like a little bit of a curve to the right side and next we'll do for the left side too so border bottom right radius so border bottom radius and we set that to five pixels also and now everything has this sort of shape to it maybe the five pixels is too much so we can reduce it to maybe three pixels um, three and three here so much better the other thing is my black keys I'm looking at my keyboard right now and my black keys look slightly too long so what we'll do is instead of um, what do we have this okay we have it set to 72.5 I will change that to say let's say 60 and see how that looks so 60 pixels for the height of the black keys of oh, 60 is too small too small so um, let's say 65 let's see where that takes us 
okay 65 is more like it so 65 pixels all right guys so this is our first lesson we've got the piano designed and next we're going to be working on the javascripts and other things later i'll add the stops at the bottom thank you so much guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video again i'm trying to keep everything short so you're not like overwhelmed with too much information also i want to make sure you understand everything about each step i take before moving to the next because it's not like i'm giving like a lesson in web building i'm just giving a lesson in building a piano so um a lot of these things you have to learn as we go so please if you have any problems you don't understand anything or something doesn't work out right please let me know all right guys thank you so much adeboe thompson your neighborhood nigerian from the